Alright, hello, hello to all my guys, gals, and non-binary pals out there across the electrical ocean. This is Jazzman back with another game. You've got uh, Sugavara playing FFSL on uh, on this side, and then uh, over here we've got Leave to Loathe playing Full Faction Underdeps. Uh, so nice and simple, uh, Leave to Loathe has gotten pretty lucky and gotten uh, Slytherin for his turn, so Escalation going to be quite stacked uh, by the time Slytherin gets back to mid. And as far as Skizik go, I mean, I mean, they've got their their Skizik. What can what can I say? They're like the inferior dwarves. But uh, and of course, I say that as an Iron Fist player. No offense to any of uh, any of my Skizik players that may be watching. But uh, Filter will probably do pretty well in this mid. I mean, once he stealths up, you know, leave to loathe is probably gonna have to like waste a waste a fire ruby or something to find this thing, unless he somehow gets lucky and walks into it. But with Energy Thief, that might be a little bit difficult. Under normal, uh, under normal circumstances, Rip Demon Alpha is kind of kind of a bitch to fight against, in my opinion. I mean, it's it's got counter attack, but it also has regen and damage shield, so it's really good in melee too. So uh, Filcher going to stealth up here. Now, if I were Filcher, I would probably move. I don't know, I'd probably move like right to the back, to be honest. I, I get it. I get in nice and close behind him, just just because like like he's already moved from from this direction, so it's like you're trying to mind game him like. Well, he's already moved that way. Maybe he like he won't think to move back in the same direction he moved from. That's the, nobody does that. But uh, you never know. Maybe leave to loathe is secretly like fucking Magnus Carlsen or something. You never know. But uh, Hikation Arbiter here, unfortunately, going to be all up in Sugavara's font. I would say I don't know. Does Resil does Resilient Skizik win this? I don't think he does. Like Fury plus sixteen damage. I know he's not ranged. So counter attack, uh, counter attack is kind of nothing, but I think like with bleed healing through the blood balls, uh, and you know the, just the fury damage stacking, resilient probably loses that fight, barring any you know barring any spells. And uh, wow, what did I say? Rip demon moved forward instead of backward. And uh, did he did he lose AP to energy thief? Yeah, he did. He actually lost two. So uh, filcher going to paralyze the shit out of that out of that rip demon. And this is good because paralyzed champions cannot make counterattacks. So if I were Sugavara here, now, well, actually, hold on. Uh, I'm thinking what, like, what the what the order of operations would be because uh, the the netter makes an attack, right? And he's gonna get unparalyzed after the damage. So Rip Demon actually might be able to counterattack here because uh, Rip Demon Alpha was uh, deployed first, right? And I'm, I'm I'm thinking that's how that works. I guess we'll see if uh, if Sukavara does decide to attack. Uh, he actually dictated on um, on full AP, so he kind of wasted the uh, the AP gain here. If he was going to do that, he probably should have attacked first, or at least moved to uh, you know just to save to some of the point of that ability. He needs a champion top. I mean, there's no other way around it. He kind of needs something else up there, preferably something cheap to help win that uh, to help fend off that arbiter. Actually, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why did he not get unparalyzed from that damage? It takes 19 damage, makes a counterattack. Did he really not get unparalyzed after that first hit? What the hell just happened there? Huh. All right, well, I guess there's I guess there's a dead rip demon some for some reason. Took 19 and then, yeah, didn't make a counterattack and then 17. It's inter it, it kind of made the difference there because that minus defense from Paralyzed lingered even after the first attack landed. So, I mean, it got basically minus four defense for those attacks. Hmm. All right, well, I guess Filcher finishes it off and that actually puts Sugavara in a very strong position. He's gonna have to, he, he can get into the mid uh, with that Iron Guard. So Leap to Loathe should be fine. At least for the moment, but I mean, kind of like falling behind, unfortunately, due to that. And then he does contest top, so he has that going for him. And uh, yeah, like I said, resilient Skizik definitely doesn't win that one v one unless there's like quickening or something involved. Because because the thing is, Arbiter can heal off those blood balls, right? And Under Depths has like split personality and shit they can cast, so you never know. Uh, so Slytherin and then, man, an Overlord too? Jeez. This guy this guy played like one game against Kathir Forest and was like, man, fuck all this range nonsense. I'm running all Arrow Eaters. <laughs> he's got he's got Overlord, he's got Iron Guard, he's got Arbiter, and then uh, Slytherin with Absorb. So all the anti-range. He, he was asked like, how much anti-range do you want? And 
leaves low said yes. So Filcher cannot re-stealth just yet, so Vanguard takes his place in the font. And then, uh, yeah, Netmaster, Netmaster is kind of just going to sit and do fuck all for the foreseeable future. I mean, facing two, uh, two bots there here. I mean, he can hit the Slytherin if it manages to, uh, to make it into the fight. But I think Filcher here is going to rotate. Like, uh, that's probably what I'd do, is I'd rotate Filcher topside after the, uh, the stealth comes back up. And then go for, like, some paralyzes on that Arbiter to give uh, Resilient Skizik a little bit of breathing room. But it looks like he's going for the Bolter instead. And, I mean, Bolter is ranged, like, he'll take some counterattacks. But just having a... Wait, 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 wait. He's not moving at top? What are, what are you doing there, buddy? What, are, what have you got cooking? He's moving it towards the chasm. And is he thinking like Arbiter is going to go here? Like if he goes here, yeah, there's no way he's in attack range. Should have just moved it like up the bridge. Like Under Depths doesn't have any like domination or anything that could move you off the chasm, right? Even if they did, like you'd still be in cliffing range. Anyway, I don't, I don't know what was going on there. But Arbiter makes an attack. And uh, should be, I mean, that Resilient Skizik needs kind of needs to start fighting back. Like, he needs to regain control of that top font. I know Arbiter is kind of scary, like, you want to play around Fury and whatnot. And it's going to double hit you next turn, but you kind of need your font back, you know, at some point. You could actually get 24, and then, I mean, if you move Bolter here, like, in, like into double hit range next turn, like, up the bridge, then you could have probably killed that Arbiter with, like, I don't know, maybe a Tornado or something. But as it is, that Arbiter should live at least another turn. Uh, actually, Leave to Loathe puts the banner in the font. And then, okay, yeah, a Demon Shield too. So a Demon Shield on the Absorb Champion. Huh. Now that is that is not something I would have considered. Maybe he's, uh, he really must have been traumatized by like a Jackai Elder or some shit in his uh, previous matches. But, uh... Energy Thief being fed. Oh, he's already at full AP. Okay, so maybe that was just a slight a slight miscalculation there by Sugabara. So Filcher restealths. I'm assuming he's going to sit mid then in that case and uh, just paralyze some of these boss there as they come in. Bolter, yeah, Bolter should go top. Like, he's, he's going to do nothing versus all these arrow ears. Luckily for Skizik, they do have a lot of really good melee. Like, they've got the, uh, the Black Guard, which kind of owns with reflexes three. And they've got, uh, I think Warguard would do really well here, uh, once that Overlord comes in. And then uh, they've got uh, they got the, uh, the the Hammer one with Conqueror and Stun. And then they've got other, they've got a bunch of other shit. they got too many champs to keep track of. But yeah, they do have a lot of good melee, and they have good spells. Like, if you could get, if you could get, like, Mimic or something on his Black Guard, like, Mimic the, uh, the Absorb or whatever. Well, I'm probably not the best choice. I'd probably mimic, like, the Warlord. Yeah, inhibiting touch, then the Warlord ability. But, uh, resilient. Making a couple baps, and then uh, flanking. Flanking actually doing some pretty nice uh, DPS here. And Arbiter down to 18. So resilient Skizik will definitely be able to live uh, the next two hits. And I'm assuming there might be, like, a Retribution or a Sacrifice on that Arbiter. Because uh, otherwise it's looking pretty grim after the reinforcements arrive. Mm. Yeah, because then I think, like, after a double hit from Arbiter and then, like, a sacrifice, you should probably have made your Nora's, like, you'll have definitely made your Nora's worth uh, out of out of her. Because you've been contesting this font this whole time, right? And you just refund a huge chunk of her cost. But uh, the problem here for Leaf to Loathe is that he hasn't really made any progress mid. Like, he has triple arrow ears, and he's afraid of uh, a filter <laughs> that, and a netmaster that can't attack him. Like, Vanguard has 9 damage. Like, you should be going in there, like, with your Iron Guard and stuff. Get, get get a couple more Fury stacks, get Slytherin with its 17 damage in there, pull that uh, netmaster closer with Fascinate. You need to... So, like, in these situations, when you've got, like, a champion harassing in, another, in a side font, like, it's all well and good, but if you don't make any gains on the other side of the map, like, to take advantage of your tempo, then you've kind of kind of forfeited uh, your the advantage that you're making, because it's just a stalemate here, basically, and until now. Like, he, d he did move in. He did the right thing. But, uh, yeah, his, his Overlord moves up, finds the filter, so no more knockout. Now, I didn't even, I didn't even notice this. The Wilder coming down, another ranged champion. 
into these guys. Probably not the best choice, but does bring imbue stun. So Vanguard could potentially get a, a, I don't know, a stun on the Iron Guard, but like he has nothing to follow up with that. And, uh, yeah, there's actually the Retribution. Mm, I, I think I would have preferred the Sacrifice, to be honest. Because, I mean, you're giving over two Globes and the Font. And then in exchange, I mean, Resilient Skizik, of course, would have lived. But I think Sacrifice plus uh, another Deploy would have um, would have done really well. Like, imagine if he deployed a second Iron Guard or something after that Sacrifice. And then just, you know, ran everything into mid. Like, he'd be he'd be winning so hard. But now, I mean, this Iron Guard is going to get stunned. And uh, after that, though, like I said, there's not really much follow-up. Like, there's two ranged units and a, uh, a filter, which is most likely going to have to run away. So all, uh, all Sugavara can really do right here is delay. And uh, Netmaster getting a little mutate action going. Not really going to do much. Unfortunately, Skizik do not have an easy uh, an easy counter to Arrow Eater, aside from their melee. I mean, like you can you can maybe stick like a totem in the face of these Iron Guard and uh, in the face of these Voss Sayer and just you know wait it out. And you maybe what you could do is stick the totem in there for guarded, and then just walk around the Voss Sayer and go for the shrine, which by the way is only level six. So there's actually a reforge on the Slytherin. Taking away Arrow Eater, so now uh, Ruthless Netmaster has something to do with his all, with all his AP. Still can only get one hit though because of Absorb. Man, that Demon Shield was crazy. I <laughs> I don't know about I, I don't know if I would have done that. Like putting a putting a Demon Shield on an Absorb unit just seems like such a waste to me. Anyone else? No, just me. But uh, yeah, so Filcher gonna have to wait again to re stealth. This is sort of the problem with Filcher. Like Filcher is really cheap. Like I definitely run it in Skizik. But he doesn't have any way to uh, stealth again if he's found. So he's not like Elven Shade, for example, that can uh, Shadow Strike or take Flash Bomb. And if he's found, he can Flash Bomb out. He just kind of like if I were to run him, I'd probably only run him for Fruit. Like if I was running uh, running Forbidden Fruit, which, by the way, would be a huge counter to some of these uh, some of these arrow ears here. Like imagine if he put a Forbidden Fruit on that filter and just one shot that uh, that Overlord. He'd be in such a good position. But uh, yeah, he does deploy the black guard though. Counter, oh, he took counter attack melee. Eh, I mean, it's not a bad upgrade. I'd probably go reflex as three instead. The nice thing about counter attack though is it does feed into your uh, your black guard training. So there's some inter internal synergy there. Deploying them banners, but uh, Overlord can't really crush anything yet. He's gotta he's gotta move all the way in before he gets his greasy uh, his greasy little clawed hands on the uh, on the Skizik. Mm. Other than that, I mean, you know, the Slytherin is still sitting pretty. Uh, Filcher moved. I don't know why Filcher moved here, like all the way over here. I'm guessing he's trying to block the, uh, the Slytherin from getting to Netmaster. But that does, of course, lead the way for Overlord to get to Netmaster, which is probably the bigger threat right now. Seeing as how you can't really attack it with more than one of your champions. And even a Hook Fiend. Now, see, if you were running, if you were going all out on the, uh, the anti-range strategy, you'd definitely take Assault on your Hook Fiends. Kind of let me down here, man. Leave to load. You gotta go. You gotta go big or go home. Gotta get. Uh, you gotta get assault on there. I know Widowma Widowmaker is really nice. Like on a champion with you know pretty high base damage and then aura on top of that, you'd make some nice Widowmaker plays. Like in under depths where you kind of uh, you kind of go for kills like a lot more than any other faction. Like and you have big damage, you can get under under the threshold easily. Widowmaker is really nice. Man, does it ever suck when you uh, when you take Widowmaker and the opposing champion is like one or two HP above the threshold and you don't even know it until you go in and you're and you're wondering why Widowmaker can't cast? You gotta be very very good with your maths to uh, be confident in taking Widowmaker, and also decapita uh, decapitating blow as well is the same thing because there's there's like no uh, there's no indicator for these abilities. You just have to you just have to calculate yourself. To the Slytherin and the Filcher. They're they're surrounding the, the Slytherin, and that will be a kill. Nicely done there by Sugavara. But that over that Iron Guard there is unstunned, so he's gonna he's gonna take some vengeance here on his following turn. Now this and this is sort of the problem I've encountered. Oh man, you you're leaving your okay, well, you're leaving your font wide open to contest, by the way. But uh, this is sort of the thing that uh Underdepth's anti-range decks always have is that Underdepth's melee 
to be like if you're running only these anti-range champions is not honestly not that intimidating am i am i wrong in, in thinking that because like you have the anti-range but iron guard like in my experience whenever a good player goes against an iron guard they just tend to die like unless like they you can't really super jamp them anymore in a split but like if someone like alakami or you know um were to go against an iron guard he'd probably make short work of it like arrow eater wouldn't matter too much to him it would just be a nuisance really yeah that overlord is definitely going to contest that font at least i would if i were the overlord like i'd, I'd want to get in there asap because uh unless you can maybe you can suss out a kill on that vanguard here it's gonna go yep another boss there reaver so uh more anti-range he's running all the anti-range in the book i wonder if he's running boar spider People tend to forget Boar Spider also has Arrow Eater for whatever reason. Uh, Altar of Votave, that is an interesting choice. I don't think I've seen this since it's quote unquote buff when it was given Motivate Unholy, which is basically half a banner in Under Depths. But uh, yeah, the Altar of Votave ability just doesn't seem worth it. I mean, two cooldown reduction when your demon dies, like you have to be in a losing position in order to get any benefit out of that. And I mean, even the benefit that you get is like so small that it's not, I don't know, it's just not worth running to me. Like why would you run a relic that only matters when you're losing when you could run a relic that helps you win? You know, it kind of makes more sense that way. But uh, how, is the, how is this bolter still topside? Did he not move it last turn? Like, I feel like this thing should have been in the fight a long time ago. To be honest, like if it were me, I'd probably just move the bolter this way and start poking at the shrine. <laughs> Because he can't, like, I mean, what the fuck is Bolter going to do versus Arrow Eaters, right? But uh, he does go for the totem. I can't believe Overlord did not contest that font. Like, why Why are you being so passive? That's annoying. <laughs> stop doing that. Stop Stop being passive. Uh, he does have mid-font, though. Uh, but not for long. I'm, I'm assuming Filcher or maybe Blackguard is going to get in there. Unless, uh, did Filcher die while I was talking? No, he's dealt. Okay, good. It's going to be, uh, oh, man, I... <laughs> I want to avoid all of the uh, crappy commentator comments, which I haven't gotten, by the way. You, everyone who watches these has been uh, super, super friendly and encouraging. So thank you very much for that. I know I'm uh, I'm no YouTuber, but uh, I do the best with what I've given. So there's a hive to contest. And I mean, it's it's probably safer than putting Blackguard in. I think if Blackguard had counterattack or had reflexes three instead, I mean, it honestly wouldn't matter too much in this matchup because uh, IR guards are one to two range, like all the boss there are one to two range. They got those long arms and big hands as well. You know what they say about demons with big hands, right? So Hive contests, I'd probably just back off in that case with the Blackguard, like if you're going to contest with the Hive. But uh, he, he's setting up for a power turn here with the drummer. And uh, it's a shame he doesn't have Glorious Leap. Like, Glorious Leap... I'm pretty sure Blackguard can still take that, right? Glorious Leap would go pretty hard here, because Under Depths does not have much cleanse. Uh, he's going to try and play around the grappling hook, I assume. And not have that Blackguard pulled in, just die. He doesn't have any Blackguard banners out yet, which is kind of a shame, because they give tough one. But, uh, you know, he's getting the Relic Guardian buff. And honestly, if I were leave to loathe, like I'd just completely ignore the netmaster and go for, and uh, go for the black card if he can. See if he still had. Well, I mean, he can get a crush here, and uh, and scold, uh, scold everyone. Now the funny thing is, if he does get the crush off, uh, drummer will not be able to battle drum because battle drum will cost six AP, and drummer will only gain five at the start of his turn. So that's uh, that'll be kind of funny if he does that. But, uh, ooh, he runs into the filter. Okay, so there's the oh man, the hate leech. I know a guy who loves this combo. One of my uh, one of my friends playing this game. He, he loves to put hate leech on boss their iron guard. Just because I mean, it's it's kind of like kind of half a super champ. I don't know. Like it, it gives him life siphon, which helps. <laughs> but if I were gonna put any equip on iron guard, it'd probably be like you know helm of chaos maybe or the uh, the uh, the traitorous helm. Acacian Blood Draft would also be a nice one. But uh, yeah, Hate Leech for the Sustain. And uh, he does do the Scold, so Battle Drum will be out of the question next turn. The thing is, though, Sugavara could, if he's feeling really ballsy, he could Transfigure, do a, uh, what's it called, a War, war Cry? No, not a War Cry. Um, DSL Avatar ability. 
to give the drummer one additional IP, and then drummer could then battle drum, which would uh, give benediction to all the other Skizik. So that is an option if uh, Sugavara decides to take that route. But uh, yeah, moving that Hook Fiend up, I'm assuming it better have Horrific Aura, because otherwise it's kind of screwed. Like, it's presenting itself as kind of a, uh, a juicy target for that Netmaster, who otherwise can't really hit anything. He actually left the Hive in the font. I'm, I'm assuming, yeah, he, he just he decided to kill the Filcher instead. The, the Filcher is dead this time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I, I have to double check that. So there's Pincushion. I was wondering when you would show up. The last of the uh, the Arrow Eater arsenal, aside from Boar Spider. Come on, you gotta you gotta deploy Boar Spider too. You gotta get the gang all here. Maybe uh, maybe Nightfall Spider too. And what's that? What's that one Voth there? The Vanguard that nobody runs. Yeah, the Vanguard also has Arrow Eater. Mm, there's a okay. So there's a quickening. So here comes the play. Fortunately, no battle drum. And yeah, that that was a little bit. I would say that was a little bit greedy. Like you're not gonna get much out of a quickening this turn and actually he surrenders after that <laughs> so very uh unfortunate for sugavara there he didn't take that into account oh well nicely played by leap to loathe and others and uh, we'll see everyone in the next one